Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. I am Audrey Butlitz Swenson, and I am the liaison librarian to the College of Management Technology. Um, today we're going to go over, you know, business and management research in the Walden Library. I will go ahead and keep an eye on the questions box. Um, if anything comes up, if you want me to repeat something or if something isn't clear, I'm, I'm happy to, to go back. Um, if you have a more in-depth research question, I'll probably follow up with you um, after the webinar and I'll use whatever email address you use to register for the webinar. So I just want to say a quick hello because I know we don't get to see a lot of um, students face to face or you guys don't get to see us. So I wanted to show my face and then I'll pop out and um, like I said, I'll keep an eye on, on questions during the webinar. Um, and I should say the webinar will be recorded and um, sent out to anybody who registered. So that's anybody who um, you know, showed up or didn't show up. It doesn't matter. Everybody's going to get a recording uh, sent to them to the email address they used to uh, register for the webinar. So in the future, if there's another webinar that you're interested in, but you won't be able to make it, that's totally okay. Just register and a link will be sent to you. So again, my name is Audrey butler Swenson, uh, liaison librarian to the College of Man Management Technology. And today we're gonna be talking about researching um, for business and management in the Walden Library. So what will we talk about today? Um, talking about library help. So how to get help from the library. Hopefully many of you have had a chance to email us or send us a chat. If not, I'll show you where to go to do that. Um, we're going to go through some of the library business subject resources, um, and we're also going to go through um, some search examples and tips, uh, especially for using the databases, because you know they're not uh, they're not as easy or intuitive as Google. And then a little bit about searching outside the library. Should we have time? I've, I'm going to plan on talking about using Google Scholar if anybody has done that before. So I'm just gonna make sure there's nobody in the questions box yet. Excellent. Okay, let's pop out of this PowerPoint. So this is the Walden Library homepage. Hopefully many of you have already been here. Um, the library homepage is freely available. You don't have to go through the portal to access it. You'll see that I have the URL here, but you can also do library.waldenu.edu. So, um, just as the agenda said, we're going to start by figuring out how to contact the library. So in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see an Ask a Librarian button. And this is where all of our contact uh, information is. So if you need to send us an email, um, we have a contact form right here. You can, all, all, uh, you can also email us directly at library at mail.waldenu.edu. So that's the other option. You can chat with us. Um, our dates and times are available here. I do point out that chat's really great for those quick questions like, um, is this available in full text? How do I find this article? Um, my course reading link is broken. All those kinds of things. If you have a more in-depth research question, that's probably a better um, a better question to send into our email just because we want to be able to give you a really thoughtful step-by-step um, instruction response and that's a lot harder to do in chat so just keep that in mind we do have voicemail you can leave us a message and then we'll get back to you via email um, and if you happen to be a doctoral appointment or a doctoral student you can make an appointment with me to talk one-on-one -on -one. Um, we have 30 minute time slots so you can we can talk either by phone or screen and screen sharing and audio so just know that that's an option for you um, and then the other thing is if you need help, especially with tech help, um, if you go to get help at the top of the page, um, you'll see that we have a tech help section. And so this kind of goes through some of the things that might pop up, like, you know, there's goofy stuff that happens with their databases sometimes. Sometimes students have firewalls. Um, you know, maybe you don't have the most up-to-date version of Adobe. So there's a lot of different um, suggestions and tips in here. And then there's some information about contacting customer care. Like we don't, uh, the library does no control over the logins for the databases. So there's just some things where, you know, we can provide you with some help and then otherwise it's gonna have to go to customer care. But um, we're happy to direct you one way or the other. So don't be shy about reaching out to us with any issues that you might run into. Okay, so back to the library homepage. 
hopefully many of you had a chance to kind of dig through our content. Um, I want to explain what's going on with this top search bar before I even dig into the business and management resources. This, um, hopefully many of you have already tried running a search in here. You know, it's um, you can put whatever you want in here. Just keep in mind that it's not quite like a Google search. You're not going to put in a full sentence of like employee turnover and human resources in Georgia. That's, you know, you wouldn't want to put in a full sentence. Um, you'd want to think about what are the subject um, items that are in my phrase here? What are the different terms that I could use for this search? So you could say employee turnover and human resources and Georgia. So that's how I would run that search. So make sure you don't put full sentences in there because it gets really confusing for the databases. Um, they're not, like I said, they're not as intuitive as Google. They can't, they're not going to sort out the in-between words and kind of guess at what you want. They're going to go, what, what are they asking for? So make sure that you break apart whatever topics you're looking for um, and use an and between them. Um, and we'll go over that a little bit more in depth um, in the database or one of the business databases when I do an example, um, which I should bring up. So in a few minutes, I will be doing a sample search on one of our business and management databases. If anybody has an example search that they want me to do, feel free to type it into the questions box now or when I ask for it later on, if you think of something off the top of your head then that you want to see me do, um, just go ahead and put that in the questions box and we'll get there. But I just wanted to point out that, you know, this main search bar is great. It's going to search all of our databases simultaneously. Um, and the easiest way to look for that content to begin with is either creating your search string or clicking on the advanced search, which I'm, I'm not going to do because we're going to do a business um, research example in one of the databases. So the other thing I want to point out is this search everything. So this is really great if it's like one in the morning and you're not sure about something and you don't don't know where to dig into the library to get an answer, or it doesn't even have to be the library. It could be a writing center question. It could be uh, it could be Center for Research Quality. It could be any different department. Um, we have compiled all of our different frequently asked questions in in this um, option. So I put in peer review just so you could see what the results would look like. So if you click on search everything, type in your term or whatever it is that you're looking for, um, what it'll do is it's going to search our website specifically. So anything that's talking about peer review, you'll see our guide content on the left hand side. In the center is are the quick answers. And so that's the content that's going to come from all over the university. You're going to get answers from the Writing Center and Academic Skills and Career Services all over the board. Um, so, if, you know, like we put in peer review, if we want to verify help, we need help figuring out how to verify if an article is peer reviewed. If you click on that question, it'll show you the step by step instructions and it includes a short video. So these are really great if, you know, maybe chat's not open and, you know, you're concerned that the email might not take too long. Um, I do want to point out that the emails we, you know, we have a 24 hour service level agreement. Um, we hardly ever go outside of that. We try and get back to students as quick as possible. But again, if it's the middle of the night and you just need a quick answer to something, uh, that search everything function is really handy for that. Okay. Um, one more thing I want to point out before digging into actual uh, the actual databases uh, and business management resource content are course guides. Um, so hopefully, if you if you're new to Walden, um, this should save you some time. Um, we're hoping to get all of those required course readings that you see in your in, in Blackboard that say Retrieve from Walden Library. Uh, they're all pre-linked for you, but as of right now, we're working on getting them linked directly into the classroom, but it might take a while for us to be able to get all of them completed. Um, so for now, if you click on course guides, and I'll just pick on, uh, let's click on accounting. So I'm going to do, I'm going to look for the one of the accounting courses. So I'm going to click on A to B, go to the accounting um, course code, find the one I'm looking for, click on it, and you'll see that the course readings are linked in here. So all you have to do is click on them, and it'll open up for you. So um, if you've been using that main search bar to search for uh, those readings, you don't have to do that anymore. They're pre-linked for you. Um, if you still are trying to look for a citation, maybe something that somebody else posted in your discussions, or who knows. Um, if you're going to search for it in Thoreau, our, our main search bar right here, 
don't put the entire citation, just put the title of the article. When you put the whole citation, the databases get confused again. So just the title. All right. Okay, so the next step we're gonna do is I'm gonna click on this research by subject. So what we've done is we've organized our resources by program to make this easier to figure out where to start. Um, so if you're researching something outside of business and management, you certainly don't have to just stick with that area. You know, if you're looking at um, project management and IT, you're going to want to look at the technology and applied sciences uh, section. If you're looking at leadership and education, you'll want to go to education. So just know you don't have to live in the business and management research section. It's just there is a place to start. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Um, so this page kind of has an overview um, and collection of our business and management related content. Um, this top search bar is very much like that main search bar on the home page, except it's focused on journals that are related to business and management. So if you went into that main search bar on the main page and search for the word management, you're going to get millions and millions of results. If you come in here, you're going to get a, a smaller percentage because they're going to be more focused on the journals that are already focused on that topic. Um, so, you know, if you're working on a discussion post or doing an assignment, this gold search bar is really great for that. Um, you'll see our databases. Um, not all of them are listed here. This is just a place to start uh, because we have so many different databases. Uh, this is more of like a, a bite size, you know, a bite size to start with. Here are some good ones to start with, especially if you're just working on coursework and um, your, you know, discussion posts. So um, if you want to see all the databases that are related to business and management, if you click this bottom link, it'll take you to our databases A to Z page uh, with the drop down selected business and management. And these should look familiar because they're already in our business and management page. Um, but we have a lot of different databases listed here. Some of them are more, spe are more specific, like this accounting, tax, and banking, um, computers and applied sciences complete, which is IT, but maybe again, if you're outside of, if you're looking at some IT related business content, you'll want to go in there. Um, there are some open source resources in here. You'll notice that with the unlocked symbol. So just know that you can move beyond those databases if you want to. We do have all of our databases listed on the A to Z page, but we can come back to that later. Um, I wanted to show you some of the other databases that we have, if this is of interest to anybody. Um, I will be doing a webinar, I think it's in a couple of weeks. I can't remember the order of all of them, but um, doing research for company reports, industry reports, market reports. Um, so we have some really great resources for that. And I'm not going to dig into these databases today, but I will be talking about them in that future webinar. So if you're interested, um, take a look at that. And before I'm done, I'll, I'll show you guys how to look at our recorded webinars and our upcoming webinars. So if you're interested, it'll be available to you. Um, you can look through our journals by topic if you want to. Um, so be, say, uh, well, oh my goodness, this accordion covers much of the business research basics. So this is really broad. It's not even specific to business. It's just how do you choose a topic, choosing a database, keyword searching, subject terms, evaluating resources, looking at uh, verifying peer review, or what is peer review? So a lot of it is what we're going to be talking about today, but in a broader sense. Um, we have some information about common business topics. Um, if you're a doctoral student, lit review, statistics and data, test and measures theories. Oh, okay. So actually, I forgot that there's an upcoming webinar section down here. So um, it looks like I don't, that, that uh, market report one isn't until April. But if you click on this, it'll take you to our archive page and there'll be a link in there. So um, if you're a doctoral student, I suggest checking out the rest of these. If you are a master's or an undergraduate, um, check out these first, you know, these first two sections and then play around with the databases. Um, and you'll notice that's me, um, but you can um, do quick answers from here. You can contact the library from here and you can make a doctoral appointment from here if you're a doctoral student or if you're um, working on your, your dissertation. So um, my, uh, the database that we're going to demo today is Business Source Complete. And just know I'm not picking this one because it's the best one. I get that question a lot. Just know that I'm picking it because I think the search interface is the most clear, especially for demoing. 
Um, so that's what that's why I have this preference for demoing. And if you look at previous uh, webinars, uh, but it is a great database. It isn't the best database. It isn't the worst database. It's just a great database. So, all right. Um, one of the topics that comes up a lot is turnover. So um, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to search for that because I don't see any topics in the questions box. So if that changes, I can do a second um, a second search, but I don't see any example topics in the questions box. So um, I'm going to type in employee turnover. Oops. And I'm going to make sure that I check mark peer reviewed scholarly journals. Now, if you're working on coursework or discussion posts that don't require peer reviewed content, you don't have to check mark that. But if you are going to be, um, you know, if you do need a peer reviewed article for that, make sure you do check mark that box. Not all of our databases are going to have uh, peer reviewed scholarly journals check mark box just because some of our databases are peer reviewed content only. Um, this one has both peer reviewed and non peer reviewed content. All right, so let's go ahead and hit search. All right, that's a lot, which is great. Uh, we've got about 3,600 results. Um, you know, if you want to narrow this down by date, we could certainly do that. Um, 1915, maybe that's a really interesting article, but it's probably not something you're going to be using for a discussion post. So we're going to delete out that date, enter in 2016, and update the search. And now we're down to 715, which is still quite a bit. So um, something I want to point out while we're in the database is that uh, the databases index their content with subject terms. So you'll see these subject terms listed below the title and the other citation information. Um, the reason I point that out is because um, they use keywords that we don't always think of. So I put in employee turnover and they use labor turnover. And that's fine, um, but it might be something where it could help you expand your search. So let's do, um, I'm going to say labor turnover. So the reason I've done this, and I'll explain what's going on, is I've put employee turnover, so that was my first search term. But I'm thinking, OK, well, labor turnover is another good way to describe that too. So I've put an or between it. And that or is actually called a Boolean operator. And they're already built into the databases for you. So you'll see if I clicked on the and, and, or, and not are already there. So or is going to tell the database to search for either one of these terms or phrases that we've put them in. If I had and, if I was looking for a specific industry or company or geographic location or demographic, I could put that in here. So if I was looking at accounting, you could put in accounting. So now it's going to be looking for employee turnover and accounting or labor turnover and accounting. But I'm going to leave that out for right now just so we can see the difference. OK, so that gave us another 40 something articles, which is great. All right, so the other thing um, that you might want to keep an eye on. So if you were doing research on this topic, there might be other things that are related that are of importance to you. So maybe like retention. Um, I know engagement comes up a lot. So there's a lot of other terms that you can use. The other thing you can do while you're in the databases, and I will go ahead. And I'm actually putting in both of these terms in quotation marks. And what that does is it tells the database to search for that exact phrase. So don't break it apart. Don't put it in a different order. And it's going to narrow your results. So I'm going to go ahead and hit search. And that dropped it by about uh, 200 and something. Um, so now we know that these are a little bit more specific. If you wanted to keep narrowing it down, um, we could tell the databases, OK, um, I want these to be subject terms specifically. So um, employee turnover, you probably get kicked out of this, and it'll only look for labor turnover as a subject term. And that drafted another 100, which is totally fine. You can do it any way you want to. Um, you know, it's always helpful to start broad, like we did with just employee turnover without the quotes, figure out some other keywords to add in, and start to narrow it down. The more you put in at the beginning, the less you're going to come up with. So it's always better to start with broad terms, um, not add too many to begin with, um, because that can, can cause issues 
Um, and then again, I know it's different than like if you go into Google Scholar or Google where you can type everything that you want to type to your heart's content and it'll provide you with millions and millions of results. So you have to be a little bit more strategic when you're in the databases. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to use another example of something you can use in your searches. So um, I put in the word strategy and removed the letter Y and replaced it with an asterisk. And what that's going to do is it's going to search for any ending of the word. So we actually call that truncation. So it's going to look for strategy, strategic, strateg strategies, um, any ending of that word, which is great because that helps us find more results. And it will narrow down the results because we've added another term. Um, but just know that if we had strategy only, and hopefully it doesn't make me look silly. Yeah, okay, so if we had strategy, we would have lost 26 articles. But by putting the asterisks in there and doing truncation, we've got another 26 articles in our results list, which is great. And now we're down to 90 from the last four years, and that is a much more reasonable list, right? Okay. So. Uh, the next thing you can do, and this is going to be specific to databases when you see the EBSCO logo, and I'll go ahead and open up ABI Inform so you can see the two that have this option. So if you see ProQuest or if you see EBSCO, these databases have the option to add multiple databases to your search, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if this was, um, if we were looking at IT, or information. Actually, you know what? Let's do, I'm going to pick on uh, nursing because that is a very popular topic in nursing. And actually, let's do nurses. I'm going to run this search again. And then I'm going to click on choose databases. So this is going to give us the option for searching multiple databases at once. Uh, so from this list, it's kind of hard to tell what's in there, right? So you don't want to waste your time. If you hover over or click on these little blurbs, it'll tell you exactly what's in that database. Um, so that way you don't have to just randomly click on them until you find what you're looking for. Um, I, I know what these are, so I'm not going to worry about clicking on each one of them. Um, but I'm going to add in Academic Search Complete because that's multidisciplinary. I'm going to add in CINAHL because that's a health sciences database, and Medline, another health sciences database. So I think we were at uh, 60 or so. Oh yeah, just had, and that's the other thing is it does clear out your limiters, so you'll have to put them back in. So I think we were at about 60 articles on turnover and nursing, and now that we've added in those three other databases, we're up to 664. So to just know that, um, you know, updating or changing your keywords or expanding as many keywords as you possibly can, um, and then adding other databases into your search is going to help you find more relevant content. So hopefully there aren't any questions about that. I'll give you guys just a minute. Um, you know, it's hard because I can't see if you guys, if I'm, you know, going too fast. So I'll just give you guys a second to type anything in the questions box if you have them. Okay. Well, I don't see anything popping in, but I will keep an eye on it. So the other couple of things I want to point out about the database, um, and this might not be, one of them might be a little bit more helpful if you're a little bit more advanced, if you're working on a final capstone for something or a lit review, um, but you know, we'll, we'll get there. Um, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But the first thing I want to show you in the databases is that most of them will have the option of showing you your, your search history. And this is really, really helpful if you've been in the databases for like an hour or more than an hour and you've totally lost track of all the searches that you've run and you forgot to grab a previous article. You were going to go grab it and then you got distracted and then you ran some more searches and then now you can't remember where you were. So it shows you all the keywords you've used, every limiter that you've used, date ranges, did you limit to peer review, um, and it gives the option to rerun that search, and you can go back to it exactly as it was at that as that previous search. So now the search history is there to help you if you're getting lost in the amount of searches that you've run in that database. The only catch is that this will disappear as soon as you close your browser or the database times out. So just make sure um, you know that you either save this, which you can. You can click on Print Search History, 
and it'll give you the option to print it off, I think, as a PDF. Um, so, you, Or you can copy and paste this into a Word doc. So you can save it if you want to that way. I'm going to go ahead and hide it. And the other thing I like to point out is this share option. Um, so I'm not going to go into two, there's several different things you can do in here, but the one I'm going to point out is the email alert. So if you're a doctoral student, or maybe if even if you're a master's or undergraduate student and you're interested in a topic, um, and so say this is the perfect search, you finally got into a, a really decent list of results that, hey, I just want to, I want to know what's going on with this research topic and I want to see the most up-to-date content or what's being added on this topic. So that's where the search alert pops in. So if you click on email alert, what this does now is it's going to email you any articles that are added to this results list um, since, you've, since you ran the search. And so if any new article is added, you'll get an email, um, you'll get a citation with a link back to the article. So search alerts can be really, really handy. Um, the only thing you'll need to do first is sign in and create an account in EBSCO or any of the other database vendors first. And that sign in will be completely separate from signing in the databases to just get general access. This is personal. You can use whatever email address you want. Um, the librarians can't see it, touch it, or do anything with it. It is yours and it's private. So just know that you have that option for search alerts. All right. Okay. So hopefully there's no other questions about, no questions about the databases I'm gonna pop out of here. Um, I wanna show you back on the library homepage, we were talking about um, looking at all the databases and they're going to be listed here, databases A to Z. So you can come in here and sift through them. You can click these drop downs and narrow it down. If you just wanna look at vendors, you certainly can. If you get more you know, comfortable with them, um, but just know if you have any questions about the content in the A to Z page, the research page, looking for course readings, email us. It's totally fine. We get questions about those things every day, and it's it's part of our jobs, and we love helping you. So uh, before I hop into Google Scholar, I promised I would show you how to uh, find the recorded webinars, and they were on the Business and Management Research homepage. But if you look at, I think it was Get Help. Let me just make sure I'm on the right place. Yes, you'll see upcoming webinars and recorded webinars. So that's how you can look to see what other upcoming webinars might be out there. You know, there might be things outside of business and management that have interested you. And same thing with recorded. It doesn't have to be business and management. There is some really great just general research instruction in there. So, all right. So if anybody who has not used Google Scholar before, um, Google Scholar is freely available on the web. You don't have to go through the Walden Library to access it. Um, it's just scholar.google.com. And I'm actually going to borrow uh, that same search that we did in the databases. So I'm going to say employee turnover. So when we ran that search, I think we had, you know, a thousand or something, or a little under a thousand, or maybe three thousand. It was a it was a large list, but it was it was manageable. We can we could have narrowed it down by putting in employee turnover. We have one million eight eighty thousand results. That is a lot. So um, I usually do something like this as an example of how overwhelming Google Scholar can be to begin with, and how important it is to put together keywords to help you narrow your results. So just like we did in the database. Oops. We can put this in quotation marks. And so just like the databases, this is going to tell Google Scholar, do not break apart this term, do not put it in a different order. And now we're down to 113,000. Um, still quite a bit. That's still a lot to go through, which is fine. Um, again, you can narrow it down by date. Still at 25,000. Um, and if we were looking at nursing, we could narrow it down even further, and now we're about 11,400. Um, so Google Scholar is really great if you're trying to figure out how much is out there on a given topic. Um, some topics are a little bit trickier to research to begin with, like um, nonprofits or small business. Those terms in general, you'll find plenty of results, but the more you add to them, the more narrowed it's going to get um, in general. So Google Scholar can be kind of helpful if you're just trying to figure out what's out there, or if you're kind of hitting a wall in the databases, 
Um, it's probably, you know, if you're an undergraduate or in your master's, you probably won't spend as much time here, but if you're looking for something super specific, um, or again, if you're just trying to figure out what's out there on a given topic, Google Scholar is really great for that. So um, the other thing I point out about using Google Scholar is make sure that you do not click on the title of the article. Um, that will always take you to the publisher and they're gonna want money and your tuition is already um, going towards paying for a lot of our access through the databases, so don't do that. Um, you're gonna wanna use the, the PDF or HTML or the Find at Walden's on the right-hand side. Um, I'll walk you through how to link uh, Google Scholar to Walden Library, but just know that these HTML links and the PDF links are freely available on the web. The Walden Library doesn't control or own them. Um, I can't even speak to their legality. Like this one, this one comes from Walden. It's through ScholarWorks. That one's that one is a okay. But there are other ones that I, I you know, I'm not sure where they're coming from or who posted them. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how to link Google Scholar to the Walden Library, and I'll do this pretty slowly because I know you guys are probably trying to watch me and do it on your screen at the same time. So, in the upper left-hand corner, if you click on the three horizontal bar, you'll see a drop-down and you'll see an options for settings. Now you can click on that. Um, if you don't see settings, what you'll see is a little, it looks like a little daisy or a sprocket, if you ever watch uh, the Jetsons, um, and it might be up here. So just make sure you click on settings, and then library links, and then you'll type in Walden, and I'll just pause for a second for everybody to catch up. Great, okay, so I've typed in Walden, and then we're gonna hit search. And mine already has Walden University Library, find a Walden there, that's fine. Um, and if you're in the United States, um, you'll see Open WorldCat. Uh, I talked to a student who is from Canada, you may or may not see this, there might be something else there, or if you're outside of the United States or outside of North America, you might see a totally different resource. Um, just know Google Scholar is trying to help you find as much content as possible. It's fine to leave it, and then you can just ch make sure they're both checkmarked and hit save. Um, so that'll that'll give you access to our articles or to our databases, and you can access the articles through there. So um, I'll go ahead and pick on this one. And what it's doing is it's telling us, okay, this. Uh, journal, so it's actually looking at journal information, is available through this database on these dates. So 1995 to present. This article is from 2018. We're all good. We're going to go ahead and click on the database name. And here's our full text. Found it in Science Direct. So that's another bonus for searching in Google Scholar is that you will um, you know, you'll go into different databases that you, than you might have picked out earlier. So it gives you some ideas of other databases you can dig into further. So that is how you connect to Google Scholar and access um, the articles through our databases. If anybody wants me to walk through that again, put that in the questions box and I'm, um, what I'll do is I will uh, follow up with you with a link on the instructions we just did or I can go through it again if there's a lot of people who, who need me to walk through that again. All right, so um, a couple of other things that I wanna point out. Um, you'll see that you can pull the citations from these articles. So if you click on the little quotation marks to the right of the star, you'll see the different uh, formats pop up. Just know that anytime that you're pulling a citation from Google Scholar, from the databases, um, it's not, they're not going to be perfect. They're gonna get you about 80 to 90% of the way and you'll have to do the rest. So if you have questions about citations, email the Writing Center or reach out to the Writing Center. They are the APA experts and they are so awesome. So make sure you reach out to them with any APA questions and they'd be happy to help. It looks like there was one little question in there. Oh, yep, okay. So um, we do have plenty of time. So I'll just go through that one more time. So um, we're going to walk through connecting Google Scholar to the library again. So you're going to go to the upper left-hand corner and click on that three horizontal bar. Click on settings. And then library links. 
and then type in Walden. You don't have to worry about university. They know it's us. We don't have any competitors with the same name. Gonna hit search. And then Walden University Library, Find at Walden should pop up just under Open WorldCat or whatever resource you have listed there. If you don't have one, that's okay too. Just make sure whatever you have listed here is checkmarked and hit save. And then you're all set. Um, if you come back here and you're running searches and you notice the Find at Walden is gone, that's probably a browser setting. Um, so, you know, it depends on what your settings are for Chrome or Firefox or Safari or whatever it is that you're using. Um, you know, there's, I think there's settings like once you close the browser, it clears your cache and clears out all of your settings. Um, so you'll need to update that. And if you have questions about that, you have to reach out to customer care because they can help you with that. So uh, the next thing I want to show you guys how to do is um, verify peer review, because I think that's really important regardless of what level, you know, if you're an undergraduate or if you're master's or doctoral, it's, it's important to know what kind of resource you're looking at and what level of, um, you know, what level it's at. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick on one of these. Let's do this one. So I'm gonna borrow this article, but I'm gonna grab the journal title. So I wanna explain that the journal title is what's actually, um, the journal is who's in charge of the peer review process. So that's why we're grabbing the journal title and not the article title. So I'm gonna grab geriatric nursing, and I'm going to go back to the Walden Library, and then um, from the Walden Library homepage, and I'll give you guys just a second to get back there. We're gonna to go to databases A to Z, and I'm going to take you to a resource called Oryx, and it starts with a U. So we have all of our resources in alphabetical order here. So we're gonna click on the letter U. And Ulrich is listed as the first resource, which is great. So we're gonna click on that. And then once Ulrich opens for you, you're gonna paste in the title of the journal. And then we're gonna hit search. Great. So you'll notice, and actually I've seen a few of these happen now too, and that's odd, but I'm gonna go ahead and ignore it. <clears throat> so I know that we're looking at, um, we're looking for this particular journal just because I know who the publisher is. You'll see Elsevier is listed here. I know that that's the publisher based off the article that we see here, um, but that, and we don't expect you guys to know that. I just wanna explain why I know we're not supposed to be looking at that top one. Um, but the reason I'm saying that is because when you're in Ulrichs and you've run the search for the journal, what you're going to be looking for is this little black and white stripy shirt or what they call like a referee jacket. That's their way of saying that the journal is peer reviewed. So um, you'll notice that that first listing doesn't have it. Um, and it's coming from a different country. We don't know who the publisher is. Um, but if you're ever, ever concerned or confused by that, email the library. That's totally fine and say, hey, I found this article. There's multiple listings for the journal title. Can you tell me what's going on? Is my article peer reviewed? And we're happy to look at it with you. There is some silly stuff that can happen and we are happy to be a second pair of eyes for you. Sometimes journals cease to exist. Sometimes they have duplicate names like they have here. Um, sometimes they change publisher, sometimes they change names. There is just some goofy stuff. Oh, that's an excellent question. So a question popped up and said, where can I find this webinar um, after it's done? So everybody who registered for this webinar, even if you came in late or even if you, did, you know, anybody who didn't show up, the recording will be emailed to you directly. Um, and then we do have all of our recorded webinars up on our website, but if, if you're already in here, you'll definitely get an email from us in the next 24 hours. So no worries there. Okay, so um, if anybody wants me to walk through that process one more time, I'm happy to do that and just let me know. Um, other than that, I can just open up the webinar for the last 15 minutes to see if anybody has questions. Oh, yes, okay. So there was a definitive yes, it was very quick. So that means, yes, you'd like me to walk through it again. So let's pick on another article here. Uh, I'm gonna grab the citation from this one and let's grab the journal of 
management organization. So doesn't matter which one you grab it from, just grab the journal title. And then we're going to go back to the library homepage just so we can do it step by step again. And then we're going to go to databases A to Z. And then we're going to go to U, the letter U, since everything is in alphabetical order. And then click on Oryx Periodicals Directory. And then we're going to paste in the title of that journal. Run the search again. Great. And this one is a little less confusing because there's not a blank <laughs> result with the rest of them. So um, you'll notice that that's listed twice. And the last time I searched, it was three times. That's totally normal. That's, I mean, to be expected. All that really means is there's different versions. There's a print version, electronic version, microfilm version. There might be even a microfiche version. Um, they, they surprise me sometimes. There's some, <laughs> they've got a lot of different formats that they provide. Um, but all we really care about is this, this referee jacket. So if we wanted to use this article, we'd be just fine. Uh, so if I wanted to use this for, you know, an art or for an assignment or, um, for my lit review, depending on wherever you are, um, this is, it would be fine. It's a peer-reviewed article. Um, the only times that that might not be true is if it's like an editorial note or a book review, something like that. Um, and in that case, you it'll be really easy to identify <laughs> that you're looking at something that's not uh, peer-reviewed because there's going to be some like really good bias in there, some really good opinions. So if you've noticed that your article has a lot of opinions, uh, then you're it's probably not um, a primary research article or um, it's falling under that um, uh, under that category. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any other questions about Oryx or verifying peer review. We've still got 12 minutes, so I will let you guys go ahead and type things in the questions box if you have them. Um, let's see what... Oh, that's a great question. That is a really good question. So the art or the question is, is there a feature available when you find an article outside the library system, for example, at a public library? Um, so you can, um, well, I'll give you an example. So if you found an article that you really liked, you could come into Google Scholar, search for it, and see if there's a Find at Walden link that pops up onto the right-hand side, and then you can access it that way. Um, if you are wanting to see if the, the library has access to something, um, let's find one that I know we have so that it makes sense when we run the search. Okay, so this one. So we're gonna pretend like we found this article through a regular Google search or somebody posted it in a discussion post or you found it while going through um, a library database at your public library, but there wasn't full text available. So I'm going to grab the title of the journal again and head back to the library homepage. And what we're doing right now is we're going to search through uh, the Walden Library's resources by journal and um, by journal title. And what that does is it's, um, so all of the databases have their content indexed by journal title. So that's the easiest and most efficient way to do it. Um, again, you could certainly go into throw paste in the title of the article and search for it that way. But this is the most definitive way to, to determine if we have the article. So if you click on publications, um, you'll notice that we have a lot of content on the left-hand side. I didn't even get into that today, but if you're looking for dissertations, books, newspapers, encyclopedias, the content's here. Um, I'm gonna just paste in the title of that journal. Great. So I'm assuming it's probably the second one. I'm just going to go back and confirm. Yeah, my, this is my guess that this is the same one. So um, just like when we did the clicked on Find at Walden through Google Scholar, now it's telling us which databases have access. So our article is from 2017. It looks like we're set no matter who we choose here. So um, let's click on um, ABIA. That's one of our ProQuest databases. I just want you guys to get an idea of, you know, feel more comfortable uh, in interacting with the different database vendors that we have. So I'm just going to scoot this over. 
All right, so we're looking at 2017. I could search by title in here if I wanted to. I just want to show you how to drill down and figure it out uh, manually. So then we're looking at volume one, or sorry, volume nine, issue one, a supplement. So I think that was the special issue. I might have made this a lot harder for myself than I needed to be, but that's all right. Um, so then you can scroll through here and you'll notice that everything is in here by page number. So again, you could just search by title if you wanted to, or you can come in here and do it by page. So I think ours is going to be on the second page. And that's what it was called, link trust and turnover intention. Link trust and turnover intention. And there's our article. And there's the PDF. So that is probably the most efficient way to see if we have full text. But again, I'd say, you know, if you have the title of the article, just copy and paste it into Thoreau or Google Scholar. And I would say that our, our link resolver, that Find It Walden button that you see that pops up or the background software, will find it for you at least, I don't know, 75% of the time. So that'll that'll the work out a little bit but if you still can't find it if it doesn't pop up if it you know you can't locate it send the send us uh send the library an email and give us the citation say hey i really would like to have this article in full text um, if we can find it for you we will email it to you directly um, if the library does not have full text access to it we will refer you to our document delivery service um, and we'll give you directions on that and um, it's, you know, give you step by step. So, uh, and the, the document delivery service information is in the services section, but I don't usually bring that up right away just because there is a seven to 10 day turnaround. So if you're still working on coursework or if it's for a discussion post, it won't pop up the next day. So generally what we suggest is if it's an article that you really, really like, um, we'll just try and help you find something that's related that is in, in full text, so. Okay, I don't see any other questions popping up, and that's great. So, you know, if you have any follow-up questions, I think my email address is attached to this webinar. Um, there it will be a survey post-webinar, so feel free to fill that out. Say, she's doing great with this, not doing so great with that. Um, critical feedback is good because it makes me better at my job. So um, don't hesitate to do positive and critical feedback. I'm good with both. Um, I will get you guys back to whatever you're doing, uh, give you six minutes back. So thank you so much for showing up today. I appreciate it, and hopefully I'll see you at a future webinar.